If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I love riding technical terrain. But if you're a newer viewer, you may not know that my love for technical riding started well over 30 years ago. I began my professional career riding mountain bike trials. It doesn't matter how fast or how far you go, it's just all about tackling technical terrain. In a competition format, you ride a predetermined course and try to finish within a certain time limit with as few mistakes as possible. I was pretty good at it too. I won a national championship in 1993 and then back to back in 99 and 2000. Times have changed considerably since then, but after going to the Bentonville Bike Festival for the last two years and watching the elite level trials going on there and the North American Trials Championship, I figured this year was the year I was gonna make my comeback. It has been a really long time since I've done a trials competition. It's been so long that the rules have completely changed. Back in my day, you basically would ride a section from start to finish over all these obstacles. Every time you put your foot down, you get a penalty point. The maximum you get is five. So the scoring would go one foot down is one, two is two, three is three, four would still count as three. So that one was kind of like a freebie, but then if you five, that's the worst you can get on that section. Nowadays, you get points for going through gates. So every section has six gates, but if you dab before a gate, you don't get those points as long as I don't get that maximum of five. Once I get that maximum of five, it's only whatever points I've gotten to that point is what I get to carry on to the next section. I still have the old bike that I won my 1999 and 2000 trials championships on. It was custom built for me by Schwinn. Looking at it now, it's amazing how small this bike is. A few years ago, rebuilt me a custom trials bike. It's 27.5, it has some modern updates. It has a Helm dirt jump fork in the front, 27.5 Industry 9 wheels with a Hydra hub for nice quick engagement. This bike is awesome and I use it for all of my Candade bike donations and for the occasional trials demo. But unfortunately, this bike was back in New Jersey. All right, quick commercial break. If you just watched some of that footage from the Candade donations, Candade is a nonprofit organization that I work with. We travel all over the country and we try to rally volunteers to make change in their communities. As a Tread to Trails ambassador, my job is to work with bike donations. We are on track to donate our 10,000th bike this year. It's been a super awesome project to be part of and you can help get more kids on bikes by clicking the link in the description below. You can make a donation to Candade and we can get more kids on bikes. It's a great way to teach them positivity, a healthy outlet, and just get kids outside and moving. So click that link below, back to the video. So I'm entering this competition on my Reeb SST, a full suspension mountain bike. This is what I feel most comfortable on and it's what I ride in most of my videos. All right, one of the most difficult things about doing these courses is just gonna be remembering where to go. So there's gates that you need to go through. Since I'm doing the veteran class, we do the blue gates. So I'm gonna have to follow all the blue gates. There's gray ones, those are the real easy ones. And then the yellow ones are the real difficult ones. That's gonna be for the elite ones this afternoon. They're riding totally custom bikes made for this stuff and it's amazing to watch the stuff that they do. All right, I'm here with Jack Carthy, current world champ, right? Yeah. How many world championships do you have on your belt? Uh, 10, 10 now. 10 world champs, <laughs> world record holder, all that kind of stuff. This is my first trials competition in probably 15 years at least. <laughs> What's your three top three pieces of advice for me today? Enjoy it, uh, yeah, just have fun and uh, try your best. Why all right. Not? That sounds good. Let's check out Jack Hardy's competition trials. Like this thing is absolutely insane. First of all, check out the handlebars. They roll their handlebars down so that when it's on the back tire, they get into the right position. Rigid fork always, super, super high bottom bracket. So that makes it when you get it on the back tire, your feet aren't under the bike. You're actually really, really neutral. You're gonna see the control these guys have on the back tire is absolutely insane. Also, check out the rim surface. They grind their rim surface and use rim brakes. The reason they do that is that you have a mechanical lock on the brakes and disc brakes, there's a little bit of spoke flex between the rotor and the rim. And when you're trying to place your tire, 
in a fraction of an inch, you don't want any of that. So they still stick with rim brakes, cutting out the head tube, everything they could possibly do to lose weight. It's insane. These competition bikes weigh about 14 pounds. It's insane. It's so cool to see what these guys can do on these bikes. So doing this competition was super fun. When I got home and started downloading some of this footage, I realized that my math was way off because it's actually been over 20 years since my last trials competition. I've done some speed trials, some things like that, but pure trials over 20 years. It was super fun to get back on my bike inside the tape and just go through the whole process of figuring out the puzzles and trying to make them as easy as you can for yourself because that's one of the things with trials is anybody can make a course harder than it needs to be. The trick is trying to figure out how to make it as easy as you can so that you make it through without any mistakes. So let's dive into the courses. I'm gonna keep this commentary rolling and walk you through what I was thinking of as I went through each course. All right, section number one. Now, one of the things when you do these trials competitions is just not trying to screw up easy stuff. You walk the courses, you kind of figure out how your bike's gonna feel. So kind of made it through that first section fairly easy, but I was kind of wondering how this next section was gonna work. You have to ride up the skinny balance beam. I'm on my suspension bike, so I'm not quite sure exactly how it's gonna work. But like I said in some of the other video clips, this is kind of like some of the stuff that I would ride on a normal trail ride or in one of my trail boss videos. So even though I was in the tape and doing a trials competition, Buckles it's clear. stuff that I'm pretty familiar with riding. The biggest difference is doing the first competition in 20 years and you just don't want to make mistakes. Now, this section right here, the intent is to ride down the entire telephone pole, but the gate was at the far end. So even though you don't need to ride the pole, I thought that I was just gonna do it for a little extra showing off or whatever. I got to the end and I felt a little bit off balance. I just recorrected myself to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And then you see, I put my front tire and my back tire through those gates nice, yeah. and pretty much home free. I was definitely psyched to get that first section off my back. Here we are, section two. Now, this is a normal rock I would ride over in any of my trail boss videos out on the trail, stuff like that. We're, re we're weaving between all the huge obstacles that the elites were gonna ride later. This section was actually kind of tough. They only gave you about a foot to make this turn. And if you actually tore that tape or whatever, you're gonna get the maximum penalty points. So that was kind of one of the concerns to just not screw that up. And then all this stuff here, this is just having balance and bike awareness, knowing what your bike is gonna fit on, all that kind of stuff. Now on this rock, on a hardtail, you would just go right to back wheel on the full suspension bike. It's a little bit trickier, so I don't wanna go to back tire, so I just kinda of do it like a big steep roll down. After that one, I knew that I was kinda of home free. Other than that, it's just this little tricky pipe that you have to go over on an angle, but nothing that I wouldn't tackle on a normal trail, hop in a log or something like that. And out of the course with close to a minute to go. I'm out here with my good friend, Aaron Lucy. If you're digging the trial stuff, you have to check out his channel, Super Rider. It's pretty much the spot to go for trials content. Super fun, and he has a lot of cool stuff in the works. So I'll put a link in the description below. Definitely check it out. Section three. This one I think was gonna be a little bit longer and a tiny bit more technical. Again, no real big moves, but just lots of little things to screw you up. And with trials, I wanted to try to finish this day with as few points as possible. So you're just trying to figure out how to be super careful while making it through the courses and not making any mistakes. This section was a little weird because again, no momentum. So I'm gonna use that rock right there to get my back tire a little bit higher and then just hop over it like a log that you would in the woods. And then this was a little tricky because you had to go over the corner of that rock and over those, but once you do that, you're kind of home free again. Actually, that one wasn't so long. All right, section four. This one was a little bit weird because right out of the gate, you had to go up in that corner, but then just picking your way through the rocks. This section was a little bit tough because riding a full-size mountain bike, I'm on an extra large bike and it's super, super, super tight. So the only way to make this work since you had to go on this downsloping log was to point uphill so that I didn't lose my front tire or back tire, 
but then the yep. only way out was to back out. Not your normal mountain bike move, but the only way that it would work, I couldn't go the other way and ride out facing forward because my bike was just too long. Once you set up for this, it's just a little bit of monster trucking. Again, this section here is just having decent bike awareness, knowing that your bike's gonna span those two logs. And then there's a little bit of a detour on the way out. You gotta go up and over these rocks. Nothing super complicated, just slightly higher than curb height rocks. But again, you still get jitters when you do these competitions because you just don't wanna screw up. Now I'm on my fourth section. I see that I'm doing pretty good. So it just makes you more concerned with trying to have a perfect day or something like that, not make any mistakes. <laughs> All right, so far, four sections down, everything's going good. Here is section five. Getting set on these rocks, you can see passing through all those gates. The next gate was riding down this pipe. Pretty simple, just like riding a log in the woods or something like that. And then getting set. This was a little tricky just figuring out. One of the things with trials is you can't practice this stuff ahead of time. So you're not totally sure what the best approach is. I could have dropped down and ridden over this like a log or something, but I decided to go for the span and it actually worked out. And then now I just need to whip around and I have basically two punches. So this is a move I do all the time. Those punches right there and then get set for this one. This is pretty typical stuff that I would ride on a mountain bike trail. So I was feeling pretty confident, but when you're riding a trail out in the woods, you don't have anybody following you around, checking to make sure that you make mistakes. So there's definitely a little bit of pressure. Nice. Up and over that, once I did that, I knew it was kind of home free. So you just got to get to the end. And again, the time limit's two minutes. So I was making all these with a decent amount of time to spare. This was the first section of the second round, but it was actually the last course that I rode. So I had done yeah. two, three, four, and five in order, and I left one to go last. So this is my last section of the day, and up until this point, I had zero points. So I think out of all the people that rode these courses, the different categories, veteran sport, um, etc., I was the only one to this point with zero dabs. So for me right here, the biggest thing was just the mental battle of not screwing up. And one of the things with mountain bike trials, when you're riding down the trail, you can get into that flow state and you nice. just kind of takes your mind off things. With mountain bike trials, you can see there's a lot of time to think about what could go wrong. Since I was so close to the end with zero points, I decided not to ride the log that time and just kind of take the easy way out, hop through that gate. And right there, I knew I'd done it. All right. So that was the last section, super high pressure because I was clean on the day and I didn't want to mess that one up. So I did it the easy way, but yeah, perfect scorecard. That was super fun. All right, I'm here with my buddy, Mike Prudell. He is responsible for this event, but all of the trials in the entire United States. Uh, what goes into putting on a competition like this? It's a lot of planning. Uh, this one was really nice because uh, Wesley and Kenny and the trail care crews uh, came out and built all this last February. A lot of this material came from last year and the previous years. So uh, to have this set up, now it's a permanent trials park uh, that the locals can use. People can travel to Bentonville and ride trials. Yeah, well, thank you for all your hard work. Yep. Trials appreciate you. These events wouldn't happen without you, so. It was Thanks, an awesome Jeff. time. Yeah. Dude, that was super fun. What did you think of your first, well, when's the last time you did a trials competition? Uh, 2021 was my first ever trials comp, so this is my second one ever. Nice, so you're out there riding a street bike. What's the challenges of riding a street bike versus a mountain bike versus a, tri a true competition trials bike? Uh, I think there's pros and cons for both, but with the street trials bike, you lack uh, just like rolling over rocks and stuff you got to be careful not to drop go OTB yeah but on the tighter turns I feel like I had you in some stuff but yeah uh, it, it definitely fits in tighter spots but I could monster truck over a bunch of stuff yeah <laughs> did you have fun yeah it was so much fun we doing it again next year oh yeah we are Max that was freaking awesome super what'd you, fun what'd you think of your trials comp that was good different on a, a very long travel bike but it was super fun Felt like the suspension got softer throughout the day, but it was sick. No, I definitely want to do another one, actually. When you're fresh, that suspension feels a lot stiffer. Yeah. I definitely felt that too. It felt real soft by the end, but 
yeah, we'll see how he did, but it was sick. I'm stoked. Awesome. You. All right, that trials competition was a blast, and then watching the elites ride was absolutely insane. Before the elites competed, they had the awards ceremony for the veterans class, which I competed it in, and boop, 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 got first place, which is pretty awesome. The last time I did a trials competition, I believe was 22 years ago. I won a North American trials championship in 2000. So I guess that technically makes me four times national champion at mountain bike trials. It's a veteran class, but I'll take it. It was super fun to get out there, ride with all the riders, just, you know, break down these courses and have a great time. Had a good time at the Ben Bill Bike Festival. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. A little bit different from some of the other ones. Until next time, get out there and be a boss.